So folks, what I have for you is some leaked footage that is going mega viral and Trump is trying to delete it as we speak, delete it on my channel and in other places. And I need your help. Hit the like and subscribe button. Watch this, share it far and wide before Trump takes it down because it exposes him from multiple political ideological perspectives. It absolutely wrecks him because his former rival, now former rival Nikki Haley, isn't endorsing him. Biden is twisting the knife as he gains momentum and Trump loses everything. And as the dementia gets worse and worse and worse, worse with Trump fainting on video and it's going mega viral, Trump's body is breaking down. This man, in my view, has months to live. He's about to perish physically, imminently. And I want you to watch this every second. The last 30 seconds in particular are what Trump doesn't want you to see and is trying to scrub from the internet, but it's too late. This campaign out with a new memo this morning calling Trump a wounded, dangerous, and unpopular man. And this, quote, we have a clear path to victory. Hey, brand new this morning, we have your very first look at the Biden campaign's new strategy. After Super Tuesday all but confirms a Trump v. Biden rematch in November, we just got our hands on the new campaign memo, and Grace Curley is here to break it all down. The Biden campaign out with a memo looking ahead targeting Nikki Haley voters saying, quote, a significant share of moderate and Haley voters across the country are saying that Trump cannot count on their votes in a general election. Tomorrow in the State of the Union address, President Biden can try to reach out. President Biden's campaign is out with a new memo just minutes ago at the top of the hour. They called Trump a wounded, dangerous and unpopular man. And this, quote, we have a clear path to victory. Let's bring back our the Biden Harris campaign uh, put out a post on Super Tuesday. They put out a Super Tuesday memo this morning and they're taking aim directly at Trump. Here's the memo. Caroline, watch, watch this. Upwards of 10 percent. The Biden campaign put out a post Super Tuesday memo this morning saying that their strategy is to target undecided voters now. And the memo states this upwards of 10 percent of voters remain undecided, much larger than the current margin between Trump and Biden in polling and 30 business owners that wake up early in the morning, go to bed late at night, uh, trying to make their businesses work, trashing entrepreneurs, trashing the people that make our economy the strongest in the world, trashing Mika. And I know this is personal for you. I just for security reasons, I won't say who it is, but trashing people like one of your relatives mm. who could have done anything could have gotten a job on Wall Street if you wanted to, could have gotten a job on Main Street if you wanted to, but decided to go into the United States Marine Corps, mm -hmm. decided, decided to give, give everything he had to be a Marine. And we won't say where he is right now, but it ain't Miami Beach in spring break. And it's gonna be a long, tough haul for him. He did it voluntarily. That story is Many recounted Americans every day by thousands and thousands of young men and women. Yeah. Some coming from immigrant families, just like a lot of immigrants, uh, whether you're talking about World War II or whether you're talking about the Korea War or Vietnam, a lot of immigrants coming in and, 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 and deciding that they wanted to be a bigger part of this country. And Donald Trump insults our men and women in uniform every day. Every single day, and I will say again, we know him. Yeah. But who in the audience continues to cheer as this man trashes mm -hmm. our men and women in uniform? So th that is. You sit and watch cable news. Mm -hmm. Yeah. These young men and women in uniform go through basic training, they kill themselves. They sacrifice their lives. They get assigned to go somewhere across the globe for three years. Mm -hmm. For three years, committed to one thing, protecting and defending you, protecting and defending your rights, protecting and defending the United States of America. And you trash them? And you vote for a man who trashes them? 
That is just shameless. One explanation for that, though, um, and by the way, that American story is one of the many beautiful things that you can say about America, that commitment to our values, to our Constitution. But one of the reasons why you have those people clapping is not just the the um, idiot's not enough of a word. Um, I think that he has a treasonous personality. This Donald Trump is working for Russia. But the reason why these things get clapped for and support is it, that it's swallowed not just by them, but they get this information from the network. Well, you don't, you don't, you don't think Donald Trump is working for Russia. You think that his actions help Russia? Um, I think that he I don't know what's going on, <laughs> honestly. Yeah, I, I we mean, don't, I don't, we know, don't know, what know what's drives, going on. Exactly. I don't know what drives his behavior that benefits Russia. Fair? Yeah, his behavior. Yeah, yeah. When, you when, when, money? when you when you're I, constantly I undermining the United States military and trashing them and constantly praising Vladimir Putin. I mean, there but is by default, it's working for Russia. It's I, I absolutely mean, and, helpful. And, and, and how many people how many times did you go to a military ceremony, especially in the armed services? And you saw these young men and women that have committed their lives and their families have gone along and committed their lives to protecting and defending this country. And yet Donald Trump trashes them. You have that coach from Alabama that says they're weak and woke. You have Ted Cruz saying he'd rather us have Russian troops than American troops. All the insults from Republicans. You have Matt Gates going out of his way to trash leaders in the United States military. All of these people trashing our men and women in uniform. It's disgusting. We lost in 2018, we lost in 2020, we lost in 2022, but look two weeks ago. Republicans lost the vote on Mayorkas, they lost the vote on Israel, the RNC chair lost her job, and Donald Trump's fingerprints were on all of it. How much more losing do we have to do before we realize maybe Donald Trump is the problem? I mean, David Polyansky, after that, how do you really go crawling back to the Donald Trump wing of the party. Well, look, I, I mean, <laughs> memories are, are short. I, I remember being with Senator Cruz in Cleveland um, at a convention speech where he didn't endorse Donald Trump and just a few months later was one of his biggest allies and surrogates and has become so on the Hill. So politics makes, makes strange bedfellows. Um, you say what you need to say on the campaign trail, but ultimately um, I believe Nikki Haley will endorse Donald Trump. I think she'll be part of the program to get Donald Trump elected this November. Um, and I think she, if she wants to have a role and a future in the party, she's going to need to do that sooner than later. And I expect she will. The difference though, and I, I, I have to disabuse us of this kind of notion or, or talking point that the similarities between Joe Biden or, or, or the issues that, the, that Joe Biden and Donald Trump have are the same. The, the, sure. fundamental, the, the fundamental issues that Donald Trump has are not going to change. There are issues of character. There are issues of fitness. History is history. He lost those things. He's being branded as a loser. He's struggling with Mike Johnson to find any, any footwork or, or, or um, any, any uh, stability. When you're talking about policy, uh, this was repeal and replace Republicans. They haven't been able to replace Obamacare with absolutely anything there. They have nothing but a no on immigration. And so th those are th that's the foundation of who Donald Trump is with Joe Biden. There are things that can change. For example, if there's some semblance of a ceasefire or a permanent ceasefire in, in Gaza and we believe that they're inching closer and closer to at least a period of time where there's a cessation of, of, uh, of forces back and forth, if that happens, that changes uh, the economy, which we've seen him actually be strongest. Wall Street performing, the S and P, Nasdaq, all performing extremely well. If those things continue to go in the direction they're going, that is a plus in the right direction. And, and when he's when on Thursday, if he's on stage and he's able to lay out a clear vision on what immigration reform actually looks like, and the Democrats are the party of immigration going forward. So that's different than Curry, the problem. I take all these points, I really do. But like I disagree. You mentioned this earlier about how you didn't think people were going to be watching the speech to watch Joe Biden's performance, President Biden's performance. And I just I, I sort of have to push back on that a little bit, because I think that this is as much about Joe Biden, the man and kind of what people see uh, from him. And the, the, the fundamental reality that you just you can't turn back the clock. It just doesn't work that way. I mean, and this is what 
people are but telling us they're worried about. But Joe Biden's not going to look like Tom Cruise. I mean, he's not going to go up there. I don't think anyone expects that. He's not going to go up there and all of a sudden become Matthew McConaughey and start, hey, 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 hey. I mean, he's he's old. We, like, that we, is the we, we as Americans just want him to look like a president, act like a president, talk like a president, talk like the and, leader of the free world. And I think that's the position we're in. If I'm a Democrat, I'm sitting here going, how is how is the sitting president with all those accolades that you talked about, the economy, the S&P, uh, NASDAQ, all of those the other. How are they not 20 points ahead of a guy who's got 91 charges against him, four separate indictments, federal state charges? The next seven months are going to be absolutely brutal watching facts, figures and evidence come out that Donald Trump lied, tried to coerce people to do awful things. I mean, we're going to watch this continue to play out. I think Nikki Haley has to continue doing what she's done. That closing argument was spot on. Right. And to see her change her tune just because she wants to chase a short term sugar high, I disagree with. I push back on that notion. I think she's done exactly what she needs to do and needs to keep doing, because if I'm skating to where the puck's going in the Republican Party, Republicans are going to get beat. Joe Biden is going to limp his way into the White House again for a second term. Republicans are going to be beat. And then what? And then what? So now we have a whole list of potential candidates that have endorsed Donald Trump and have to kind of take a shower. It's not a big enough shower to wash Donald Trump off you. I, I just want to follow up on one thing when it, when it comes to being your president. But in our great country, being a private citizen is privilege enough in itself. And that's a privilege I very much look forward to enjoying. In all likelihood, Donald Trump will be the Republican nominee when our party convention meets in July. I congratulate him and wish him well. I wish anyone well who would be America's president. Our country is too precious to let our differences divide us. I have always been a conservative Republican and always supported the Republican nominee. But on this question, as she did on so many others, Margaret Thatcher provided some good advice when she said, quote, Never just follow the crowd. Always make up your own mind. It is now up to Donald Trump to earn the votes of those in our party and beyond it who did not support him. And I hope he does that. At its best, politics is about bringing people into your cause, not turning them away. And our conservative cause badly needs more people. This is now his time for choosing. I end my campaign with the same words I began it from the book of Joshua. I direct them to all Americans, but especially to so many of the women and girls out there who put their faith in our campaign. Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged, for God will be with you wherever you go. In this campaign, I have seen our country's greatness. From the bottom of my heart, thank you, America. God bless you.